More than 500 people are estimated to have been killed in Iran since uh, nationwide anti-government protests broke out in September. They were sparked by the death of a young woman in the custody of the country's morality police after she was arrested for wearing her hijab incorrectly. But if the protests were to succeed and the Islamic Republic was brought to an end, one problem looms large. What or who uh, to replace it with? Well, joining me now is Reza Pahlavi, the son of the last Shah of Iran and a central figure in opposition outside of the country. Uh, good evening. Thank you very much uh, for joining us this evening. And just first of all, the demonstrations have become a much broader uh, protest against the regime. How significant is the challenge the regime is facing at the moment? Good evening, Mark, and thank you for having me on your program. As an Iranian, I'm proud to say that we are witnessing the first revolution of women in its kind, supported by the rest of the Iranian uh, people, men, fathers, sons, in a campaign that has been dubbed as Woman Life Freedom. As such, I wouldn't call it a protest anymore. This is a true revolution in at hand. And that clearly worries the regime is trying to do everything as typically totalitarian system would do in cracking down on their own citizenry, even deploying tanks and artillery to regions like Kurdistan to kill people just because they are voicing their demands for freedom, although they call death to the dictator and an end to this regime. So this is the state of affairs right now. People have nothing to lose. We have political prisoners, some of them awaiting execution only because they're asking for liberty and self-determination. And this is where the world needs to finally catch up to this reality and parallel to whatever campaign of maximum pressure they're exerting on the regime, begin to think of how they can elevate the pressure by having maximum support as part of their strategy in helping the Iranian people get rid of this regime, which is the fundamental problem in the first place. The, the regime is acting with considerable brutality, as you say. Do you think it is possible that this revolution, as you describe it, um, could bring an end to um, the current government in Tehran? If it is properly uh, endorsed and nurtured, and of course backed by the international community, certainly, and it's not the first time we've seen that with the help and support of the international community, particularly Western democracies, totalitarian system were brought to an end. You can ask the question from Lech Walesa and how important that was, as well as in South Africa, when a boy political boycott also uh, aided and helped the situation. There are many examples that will suit the Iranian scenario as well. And could you play a unifying role, even a, a leadership role in a new Iran, a new democratic Iran, if such a new country emerged from all this? I've always said throughout the last 42 and counting years that my only goal is to bring our country to a point where the Iranian people in a free and fair election can determine their own future in terms of self-determination. And the way I see that happen is to lead this movement with the help of others, I'm not doing this alone, lead this movement with the help of others, each playing our parts to uh, gain support for this uh, revolution and the World Committee to come in support of it so we can finally bring this regime to its knees by ultimately perhaps well-organized uh, across the country labor strikes that would be the quickest way to paralyze the system and force it to an implosion with a scenario of transition that involves an interim government that will, of course, uh, 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 manage the country's affairs in the meantime and the preparation of the elections of the Constituent Assembly where all the issues, including the regime's uh, future form, the Constitution itself, uh, all the principles adopted in it will be proposed to the nation for a final referendum that will determine the ultimate future of Iran and its political formation, the election of the first parliament of that new democracy, and of course, the uh, election process that will determine the formation of the first government. Uh, and would you, would you go back to stand in those... Uh, to bring in... So, uh, sorry, forgive me. Would you go back to stand in those elections? 
I'm not running for any office, nor do I seek any political position in the apparatus of state. I'd rather be an advocate for the people and stand by their side vis-a-vis -vis the authorities to make sure that their rights are always going to be observed. I don't have any ambitions for powers or authority. I think my experience being at age 62 and having lived in the free world are bringing all the values that can be established in Iran and to build institutions that will be the most important safeguards so we don't deviate for the democratic path, make sure transparency would be there to keep for the country to have concentration of power or potential of having corruption rise again. Right. These are very important issues. But at this point in time, in this transition period, in this moment of the campaign, as always, I've extended my hand of co co cooperation with any democratic-seeking Iranian, regardless of their political aspirations, left, right, or center. So together, at this point, we speak in unity uh, with a unified voice, right. which is the first ask and expectation of our combatants at home, whether they are political activists, prisoners, or what have you. And that's exactly what I'm doing at this time, talking to you. Right. And just finally, I mean, we're getting ahead of ourselves, clearly. What more should the West be doing, in your view, to bring about change in Iran? There are very tacit measures, which, of course, I hope to have the opportunity to discuss as I'm planning a, a, a multi-country uh, trip in the next uh, few weeks and discuss it with uh, people uh, at high level of governance in respective uh, countries, as well as uh, members of parliament of those countries, to exactly discuss the issues of where exactly and how they can be of help in uh, helping this transition. The most obvious and most immediate concerns, just to give you a couple of examples, are the following. Uh, the Iranian regime is trying to create its own inner internet system to detach the people of Iran from the rest of the world, a little bit a la North Korea. This cannot be allowed to happen. So any assistance rendered for Iranians not to lose their means of communication, which is vital for us, with the outside world and among themselves, would be a key assistance, technologically speaking. The formation of a strike fund that I have advocated for years now to be able to finance and, uh, and be able to compensate uh, workers that would go on strike. And as a result of losing their wages, and they have to feed their families, and they're not well off to be able to survive uh, multi-week uh, sustained uh, strikes. That's another thing to, to be uh, uh, discussed. And there are many assets of this regime that are frozen, which is it's people's money at the end of the yeah. day who, for, who could be repurposed uh, to okay. that uh, effect. Just to give you a couple of examples, and there are many, many more that we can discuss, yeah. obviously. Okay, well, listen, we have run out of time. Reza Pahlavi, uh, thank you.